Good morning. This uh, video is a response to John Cedar's video, um, Our Legacy to the Next Generation. Uh, Lloyd, I'm, uh, I'm glad you made this video. You made some very strong points, and I wanted to let you uh, know that I think you're on the right track. Um, I picked up on this um, after my youngest son was born. Um, he's 22 now, going on 23. And uh, after he was born, I looked into that precious face and I knew that I could never do anything that would hurt that boy. I was not going to subject him to the life that I had lived up to that point, being associated with the Watchtower's cult. Um, from the very beginning, um, he was a, a prodigy in many, in many ways. Um, he was using his mind and reasoning with it better than kids that were years older than him. And I've always been able to reach him with my words. And uh, I've never had to whip him or spank him or slap him around or use any kind of physical discipline on him because he responds to what he and I discuss. And uh, a lot of that comes with taking time, spending the time, making a strong effort to reach a child. And that's how I chose to do it. I grew up getting my butt whipped. You know, my parents were very autocratic and they believed in physical discipline. But to their credit, they never doled out that physical discipline to the degree that they had themselves received from their parents. There's been a gradual dissipation in the severity of the physicality of any kind of discipline in our generations in my family. Um, being that I have always been able to reach my son even in, the, in that situation where you're dealing with disobedience and dangerous uh, activities that he may have gotten himself into and being able to reason with him um, was really, it may be a blessing to me that I was able to not allow him to become indoctrinated by the Watchtower. I have had my doubts for decades about the veracity of what anything the Watchtower says or teaches. I, do, I didn't believe they were the truth even before I became baptized, but in order to please my folks, I went ahead and, and to please the elders too, I went ahead and did it and figured, well, maybe I will have a grand revelation. And, <clears throat> and experience the truth, which obviously never, never came to pass. But um, we were in a living situation where um, it was necessary uh, for us to at least attend meetings um, so that uh, we could get some help from family members because of uh, our health issues. And uh, I had already told my son, you're going to believe whatever you're going to believe. I always tried to equip him with critical thinking skills, even at a very early age, I, I told him you question everything, and I showed him in the Bible how it says to read the scriptures and question everything, inquire, um, never assume anybody's telling you the truth, prove it to yourself. The witnesses have a song called Make the Truth Your Own, and I think in principle that's something everybody should do. Whatever is true in this world, 
come to understand it and make sure that you see it as a truth and then accept it. Because nature can't be fooled. If you're living in reality, the reality of everything, uh, you have to be in sync with that or you're living in la-la land. So in that aspect, yeah, make the truth your own and just understand that the Watchtower doesn't have it. So, um, I was not studying Watchtower publications with my son. He and I were sitting down and, and reading out of the Bible. And a brother came up to me one day and he said, Well, I noticed that you're not studying with your son. Would you mind if I study with him? And I looked at my wife and I looked at my son and I asked him, I said, Do you want to? And he goes, I'll give it a shot. And he gave that poor old man hell. He never quit questioning him and he never quit pointing out hypocrisies and pointing out fallacies and everything else that was wrong with the teachings. And he drove the man insane. And the man finally ended up breaking off his study because he, there was no dealing with a, a child who was, what, 14? And he was running circles around this old man with every time he was trying to lay out something. My son would question the foundations of every statement that he was making. And he drove the man away. And just living around witnesses for the period of time that we were living around there and attending meetings. Um, he was just sitting in the meetings and picking everything that's at part. Uh, he embarrassed the circuit overseer one time by pointing out a change in the uh, in the Revelation uh, climax book because uh, my son got a hold of an older issue and when they started teaching something different he said wait a minute look at this this is the circuit overseer couldn't believe it he got the book and he's reading he's like oh my god it does say that and he embarrassed him and uh, we need to break that cycle, those of us that have been indoctrinated by Watchtower. We need to not subject our kids to it. Like I was saying, my son, he was exposed to it. He attended a few meetings and he was effectively, effectively turned into an atheist by the lies and the hypocrisies that he saw going on in Watchtower. And over time, with, I understand you're an agnostic, and uh, a lot of people out there are. I'm a Christian, and uh, uh, over time, he went from being a hardcore atheist, and he's attending college now, and he's, ta he's taken uh, epistemology classes, uh, other uh, philosophy classes. He's taking an ethics class now, and he's everything that he's seen in his life and everything he's an agnostic now he's he's seen some things that don't jibe with a purely atheistic view and he kind of leans towards being christian but he doesn't want to label christian and i agree with him i said there's no need for labels you are who you are and if you're going to serve god you're going to serve it one on one with him you don't have to be tied to any organization or have a label of Christian put on you. And uh, I think he's off to a good start. And um, he thanks me every so often and expresses his appreciation for me allowing him to be him and always accepting him for who he is, whether he's uh, not a believer in God or a possible believer in God or if he wants to believe in God. I just accept him and I love him and I don't have conditions on the love I have for him. And he's thanked me for allowing him to use his mind to wrap that around the realities around him and come to understand the world around him. So I want to thank you, uh, Lloyd, for putting this video out because I think it's important that uh, that people think outside themselves and look at their children and look at their grandchildren and really look inside yourself and see, is it fair 
that we subject our children and grandchildren to the existence of uh, servitude to a cult. So again, I want to thank you. I want to wish you well. Have a great weekend and uh, looking forward to your next video. Uh, take care.